Mobile field trip with a friend? No way! Cruising on down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Next thing that you know, you see it. Octopus in the neighborhood. Surfing on the sound wave. Swinging through the stars. Yeah. Take a left at Joe Manchester. Take your second right past Mars on the Magic School Bus. Navigator Nostro. Climb on the Magic School Bus. Make a plane to two. So strap your bones right to the seat. Come on in and don't be shy. Come on. Just to make your day complete. You might get baked into a pie on the magic school bus. Step inside, it's a wild ride. Come on, ride on the magic school bus. Now let's hit the beach! Unlike bony fish, sharks can blink their eyes. The eyelids of shark close upwards, unlike yours, which close downwards. I guess even eyelids have their ups and downs. The radula of cone snails have tiny, needle-like harpoons filled with a powerful venom, which is used to paralyze their prey. This venom is strong enough to kill people. So don't you do anything fishy around a cone snail. Some sea anemones reproduce by splitting in two, which creates an exact copy of itself. That must get very confusing. I hope they all wear name tags. Australians call the Great Barrier Reef the world's largest living thing. It's 1,250 miles long. Can you imagine how long it would take to knit a sweater for the Great Barrier Reef? Thank <laughs> you. 
each time. Let's check out the coral up close. If a lobster loses a leg when attacked by a predator, a new one grows back in its place. I guess it really knows how to get a leg up on its enemies. Hermit crabs borrow discarded seashells to protect their soft bodies. They'll carry the house around on their back until they get too big for it. Then they'll find a bigger house to move into. I want to know something. If they got their houses on their back, how do they fit a bed and kitchen up there? Limpets aren't very limp at all. They hold on the rocks with one of the strongest suction cups in the world. The suction cup of a limpet could hold a 70-pound weight. Hey, maybe they should call them strongets. To disguise themselves from enemies, sea urchins sometimes drape scraps of seaweeds over their spines. They'd use the seaweeds as scarves, too, if they had necks. Isn't it wonderful here? I just know I'm going home with sand in my shorts. Attention, everyone. It seems like we have a treasure to find and clues to follow which will lead us to it. It can be found anywhere in the ocean. So we'll have to keep our eyes peeled and our minds cooking. Oh, we're going to have so much fun exploring. Click on me for the first clue. The next two are up to you. Want to build some sand castles? I can't wait to take a dip in the deep. Find out what things are not okay from the tide pool to take away. This place is fantastic. <laughs> the beach is home for a lot of animals. So if you see garbage, please pick it up and put it in a trash can. 
The beach is home for a lot of animals. So if you see garbage, please pick it up and put it in a trash can. It's up to you to help out Clarence Crab. He's hungry for clams, but the seabirds are hungry for him. Click on the clams to make him eat, and click on the holes to help him hide. Great! You want a fish card! Are you ready to continue to the next level? Wow, you won another fish card. Are you ready to continue to the next level? Do you really want to stop playing? That was such a great game. Make sure to come back and win some more fish cards. Find out what... Find out what things are not okay from the tide pool to take away. The beach is home for a lot of animals, so if you see garbage, please pick it up and put it in a trash can. I just know I'm going home with sand in my shorts. I'm gonna dig for hidden treasure. Garbage is so ugly, and it's no good for the beach animals either. It should really be thrown away. Garbage is so ugly, and it's no good for the beach animals either. It should really be thrown away. Garbage is so ugly, and it's no good for the beach animals either. It should really be thrown away. The beach is a nesting and feeding ground for lots of animals, isn't it? You've got it, Tim. It's either a home or a restaurant to thousands of creatures. And that's why we have to help take care of it. an endangered species. We should form a Save the Sea Turtles Committee. I want to help the sea turtles too, but I don't think I have the energy for another one of her committees. Sea turtles are an endangered species. We should form a Save the Sea Turtles Committee. I want to help the sea turtles too, but I don't think I have the energy for another one of her committees. According to my research, one handful of wet sand 
contains about 10,000 microscopic animals. They're so small, we can't even see them without a microscope. Shake out that sand. We're getting back on the bus and heading for the open ocean. eat krill by filling their throats with enough water to fill 50 bathtubs. Then they close their mouths and strain the water through baleen plates, arranged like teeth, in a comb. Right, and then the whale swallows the krill that gets caught in the bristly part of the baleen plates. Dinner time. It's a good thing that there's no speed limit in the open ocean, but that sailfish would have had a couple tickets for sure. Portuguese man-o-war is actually a colony of many tiny individuals, all living together. One man-o-war can have as many as 1,000 individuals. Wow! Hey, what are those? That's a school of anchovies. You know, like eat on pizza. Mm -hmm. Yuck! Anchovies! Spinner dolphins sure know how to have fun. But it makes me sad that so many of them get caught in fishing nets and drown every year. Makes me sad too. Sometimes nets used to catch tuna also trap dolphins because they hang out together. But we can make sure our folks buy dolphin safe tuna, which means fishermen use methods to avoid catching dolphins. Whoa, check out that orca. Wow. Orcas, or killer whales, are the largest members of the dolphin family. And they're all in the group of whales that have teeth instead of baleen. So, you want to visit the kelp forest? Back to the bus! are right, kelp plants can grow a foot a day. Wanna play the kelp diving game? What a mess! Let's clean up the kelp forest and save the animals too. Move me with the mouse, then click on the garbage to make me bag it. And watch out for the kelp plants, because they'll slow me down! Great! 
you want a fish card. Are you sure you want to quit this game? Wow, you really cleaned up that time. You won a bunch of fish cards. Play again sometime. This place is incredible! Maybe we can see some cool animals. <laughs> click on the left or right knob to choose an object. Then click on the green button to drop it down the chute and check it out. Gosh, that's a rock crab. Hey, it's a butterfly fish. A horseshoe crab. <clears throat> Look, it's a hammerhead shark. <clears throat>
trumpet fish. Look, a feather boa kelp. Wow, Christmas tree worms. Wow, it's an arrow crab. Check it out, a basket starfish. Wow, a flashlight fish. Whoa, a speckled balloon fish. Check it out, sea lettuce. Cool, a strawberry anemone. Look, it's a clownfish. A dog whelk. fish come from? It's a pretty clever predator. It hides behind larger fish until its prey swims near. Oh no! Then it darts out and sucks in the little fish. Where'd that trumpet fish come from? It's a pretty clever predator. It hides behind larger fish until its prey swims near. Oh no! Then it darts out and sucks in the little fish. Parrotfish doing? It's not gross, Arnold. It's just the way it eats the small plants that live on and in coral. It tears off a hunk of the reef, digests the plants, and then everything else passes through its body and is deposited as coral sand. I would never be allowed to eat that way. Oh, I can't watch. That clownfish is going to get stung by the anemone's tentacles. Don't worry, Phoebe. Clownfish aren't harmed by the stinging cells. They use anemones to protect themselves from predators. There's not a ton of space or food in the coral reef, so most of the animals had to develop ways to live together. 
That's called symbiosis. Most of the coral sand here was made by parrotfish grinding their food. I sure am glad they're such messy eaters. A ton of animals like fish and seabirds and crabs call the coral reef home sweet home. And more loggerhead sea turtles hang out in the Great Barrier Reef than any other place in the Pacific. We're in the Great Barrier Reef off the eastern coast of Australia. This is the world's biggest coral reef. Hey, let's play the Coral Maze Game! Shannon Shark is on a mission to grab fish cards and find her way out of this maze. Use your arrow keys to move her around. Push the left and right arrow keys to turn Shannon. And push the up arrow key to move her forward. Are you sure you want to quit this game? Cool game, huh? Be sure to play again.
can't watch. That clownfish is gonna get stung by the anemone's tentacles. Don't worry, Phoebe. Clownfish aren't harmed by the stinging cells. They use anemones to protect themselves from predators. Shrinkage time. Let's check out the coral up close. are made up of billions of coral skeletons. Who would have thought something so pretty was so gruesome? I think coral reefs are really great. A whole bunch of animals live together and are connected. That's why they're called colonies. Lots of one-cell plants called zooxanthellae live inside coral polyps. Coral polyps are tiny animals, not plants. They're related to anemones and they catch zooplankton by stinging them with their tentacles. I guess it runs in the family. Coral reefs are made up of billions of coral skeletons. Who would have thought something so pretty was so gruesome? I think coral reefs are a colony of many tiny individuals, all living together. One man of war can have a... So, you want to visit the kelp forest? Back to the bus! Did you know that the kelp forest gives tons of animals a place to live? 
A single plant can provide a home for half a million animals. Thanks for the info, Ralphie. You've been quite helpful. <laughs> that giant kelp is in a lot of food we eat? Like ice cream? No way. Wait, see? The giant kelp makes algin, which is like a gel. Algin helps to keep foods like ice cream, cheese, and cake frosting smooth. It also prevents them from drying out. Carlos, did you know that the kelp forest gives tons of animals a place to live? A single- Wanna play the kelp diving game? What a mess! Let's clean up the kelp forest and save the animals too. Move me with the mouse, then click on the garbage to make me bag it. And watch out for the kelp plants because they'll slow me down! Wanna build some sand castles? Click on the full bucket until you see the shape you want. Click on the shape to see the different sizes. When you know which one you want to use, click on it and drag it onto the sand. Start building! I can't wait to take a dip in the deep. I just love the feel of warm sand under my toes. This place is fantastic.
to choose a destination. Then pull the gear shift to travel there. I wonder what the Tide Pool experiment is. It's the Tidy Pool experiment, Carlos. <laughs> click on the left or right knob to choose an object. Then click on the green Here's your chance to dress up Phoebe or Carlos. Click on the arrows to make them try on the clothing of your choice. If you want them to turn around, click on the arrows under their feet. Have fun! Here's your chance to dress up Phoebe or Carlos. Click on the arrows to make them try on the clothing of your choice. Don't be bashful. Discover something. stars can cast off an arm seized by a predator. That way the predator gets a taste while the brittle star gets away. But the lost arm goes back. See that fish? That's Sunny. Help her get home by moving her with the arrow keys. But watch out for the rocks in the changing tide. 
press the space bar to make her jump. The tide is high. Are you sure you want to quit this game? Wasn't that fun? Come back and play again. Just wait till you see all the treasures the beach holds. Waves and Currents by Wanda In many places, a current of water moves along the beach. This is called a longshore current because it moves along the shore. Swimmers and things washed into the water move down the shore with the current. The longshore current also moves lots of sand. That's why a beach is sometimes called a river of sand. Rip tides actually don't have a thing to do with tides. They're caused when water in the longshore current breaks away and speeds back towards the ocean. If you ever get caught in a rip tide, just swim along the shore and soon you'll be through it. When the wind moves across water, it makes waves. If the wind blows fast for a long time, the waves get really big. Then when a wave comes near the shore, the bottom of it drags on the sand and the top falls forward and it breaks. That's when we see the white foam near the shore. What are you clicking on me for? If you want to learn some more fun facts about the ocean, click on the pictures, and I'll tell you all I know. If all the oceans evaporated, Mauna Kea, found in Hawaii, would be the tallest mountain in the world. Of course, the fish wouldn't be too happy about it. The giant squid, which can reach a length of over 45 feet, feeds by seizing its prey with its two club-shaped tentacles, which pass it back to its eight arms. Then, its powerful beak-like jaws tear the animal apart. Hasta la vista, fishy. Flatfish, like flounders, sole, and halibut, start their lives looking like other kinds of fish. But as they grow, their bodies flatten out so that one side becomes the bottom, with the eye on the other side moving to the top of the side to join the other one. I guess you could say they're flat-out funny-looking. The deepest place on Earth is the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean. It's over 36,000 feet deep. If you were to drop a steel ball into it, it would take over an hour to drop to the bottom. I hope I don't drop the keys to the bus. What? <laughs> 
the deep ocean. Your assignment is to use your arrow keys to guide Luminessa, the luminescent flashlight fish, through the dark. Look for friends and treats, but beware of her enemies. Friends and enemies. Congrats! You won a fish card! Dangerous waters! Do you really want to stop playing? I think that was great! Hope you play again! you go in the ocean, the darker and colder it gets. Brr. Hey Wanda, don't wander too far down. It's almost pitch black and freezing at the bottom. Look, my data indicates that this is a region where water temperatures fall rapidly and not much sunlight penetrates. Thanks, B.A., that's very enlightening. A lot of animals down here get their food by waiting for it to sink from above. That must make life pretty hard. The stuff on the ocean floor can be 900 feet deep and millions of years old. It's very interesting to muse on the ooze. Hey look! A fish that sheds some light on the subject of the deep. That's a lanternfish. Its photophores help to break up its dark silhouette, so predators can't see it from below. Cool. Some food from above for the bottom dweller. That hagfish will bore into the body of the dead fish. Now the intestines first, then eat the meat. I'll at least be behind the skin and bones. 
Yuck! Remind me not to invite him over to dinner. As I always say, we can have a heap of fun in the deep. choose a destination. Then pull the gear shift to travel there. What are you clicking on me for? If you want to learn some more fun facts about the ocean, click on the pictures and I'll tell you all I know. Baby cows aren't the only things that are called calves. A baby whale is also called a calf. I hope that fact amuses you. Lemon sharks give birth to 10 to 13 live baby sharks at a time. The little sharks are called pups. I don't even want to think about the diaper situation. The sides and belly of the dragonfish are lined with organs that give off light, which draws prey towards it and lures mating partners in. Sounds like a disco to me. The gray whale can grow to be 50 feet long and weigh as much as 35 tons. Their tongues weigh about as much as a small family car, but don't try to drive one without a license. Look around for some exciting discoveries. Peekaboo. Oasis in the Ocean Desert by Tim Alvin is a mid-range submersible that operates in the ocean depths down to 13,000 feet. Since 1964, Alvin has made over 12,000 scientific dives. Alvin is about 25 feet long and carries a pilot and two observers. Special arms allow to take temperature and other readings and collect bottom samples and different organisms. Lights and video cameras let Alvin record the area it visits. In 1979, Alvin carried the first people down to explore the deep sea fence. One kind of hot vent is called a chimney, or black smoker. With this kind of vent, jets of superheated water spew from the openings. When the hot water meets cold seawater, dissolved minerals like iron, copper, and zinc come out of the solution and build mineral chimneys. They can be as high as 150 feet. Another type of vent is like a hot water spring. The water escaping from these may already be cooled with seawater, so it streams out gently and is clear. Sea vents occur along the mid-ocean ridge, the underwater mountain range where the seafloor is spreading. When the seafloor pulls apart, hot lava rises from inside the earth to fill the gap. It cools down in the cold seawater, and the new crust cracks. Seawater seeps inside. The water heats up and is forced back up, escaping through vents. It can get as hot as 700 degrees Fahrenheit. The hot water has many minerals and chemicals in it, including hydrogen sulfide. Bacteria use this chemical to make their own food and become the base of a new food chain. Deep Sea Water Heaters Chimneys and Black Smokers Alvin discovers deep sea vents. Inner Space by Phoebe Journey to the Deep 
In the mid-ocean area, things start to change. The blue of the ocean gets darker as the light fades. It gets colder and pressure builds. There aren't any plants because there isn't enough light for them to grow. And there aren't very many animals because there isn't very much food. And if you go down even deeper, like 3,000 feet, you get to the deep sea where there's no light at all. Best of both worlds. Many, many animals in the midwater area travel to the upper layers every night to find food. They have bioluminescent organs, which make light. This light helps the animal blend in with the light that filters down from the surface, so it's hard for predators to see them from below. Animals that live in the deep ocean don't travel to the surface. It's probably just too long a trip for them. Predators wait below. For animals that live in the deep ocean, they're slim pickings for food. That's why, when animals do find food, some of them gulp it down whole, even if it's bigger than they are. The deep sea gulper eel has a large mouth, extendable jaws, and sharp teeth. One six inch eel was once found with a nine inch fish coiled in its stomach. Underwater Forest by Keisha Kelp plants have three main parts, a holdfast, the stipe, and the blades. The holdfast looks like the roots of a tree. It holds fast to the bottom so the kelp plant does not float away. The stipe, which looks like a tree trunk, grows up through the water so the blades can get more sunlight. Some stipes have special balloons, filled with gas, which helps the blades float up near the sunlit waters. The blades of a kelp are like leaves, where photosynthesis takes place and where nutrients are absorbed from the water. Like a forest on land, the kelp forest has three layers, or habitats. The kelp blades that float on the surface of the water form the canopy. The understory is made up of smaller kelp plants which don't reach the surface and the bottom is covered with algae and many other kinds of ocean life. Animals are found in every layer of the kelp forest. Important parts of the plant. Forest designs. Trees of the sea. There are seaweeds called kelps, which grow to be bigger than many trees on land. The giant kelp is a brown seaweed that can get to be 200 feet high. When lots of kelp plants grow near each other, we call that a kelp forest. Just like the trees in the forest on land, the kelp plants provide homes for many animals. There are a bunch of food chains in the ocean. Many plants and animals are linked in more than one chain. Pollution or overfishing of one kind of animal may weaken or break a link and affect all the other animals in the chain, including people. That's why it's so important to keep the ocean clean and be wise about using its resources. No weak links. Ocean Food Chains by Wanda Zooplankton are bizarre looking animals that eat phytoplankton. The most common type of zooplankton in the ocean is the copepod, which is related to crabs and shrimp. And boy, do they like to eat phytoplankton. Fish like herring use structures called gill rakers to strain the tiny copepods from the water. Then large fish like mackerel eat these fish. And then they might get eaten by a large tuna. I eat tuna sandwiches, so I guess that makes me the top predator. From plant to top predator. The first link. Phytoplankton are tiny plant-like organisms that drift in the upper sunlit parts of the ocean. Like plants and seaweeds, they make their own food by using the sun's energy. If the conditions are right, the phytoplankton will bloom, which means they grow and reproduce like crazy. Phytoplankton are food for small animals that eat plants. 
Tides by Arnold. Tides aren't the same everywhere. That's because land and the depth of the ocean basins affect tide. In some places, like the Mediterranean Sea, there isn't much difference between high and low tide. But in other places, like the Bay of Fundy in Canada, the tide can rise over 50 feet. Big Tide, Little Tide Tsunamis Tidal waves, which are also called tsunamis, don't actually have anything to do with tides. They are caused by eruptions or earthquakes under the ocean. Sometimes, tidal waves travel for thousands of miles before they break onto the shore, often causing a lot of damage. What causes tides? Tides are the steady rising and falling of the water on the shore. They are caused by the moon and sun pulling water into bulges on different sides of the earth. As the earth rotates, a beach will pass through two bulges in 24 hours. So, it will go through two high tides and two low tides each day. Waves and Currents by Wanda What Makes a Coral Reef by Keisha Corals are animals related to jellyfish and sea anemones. A single coral animal is called a polyp. Like its relatives, corals have tentacles with stinging cells that they use to get food. Reef-building corals have one-celled plants called zooxanthellae living inside them. The corals need these plants to grow. Reef-building corals need special conditions to grow. They are found in clear, shallow water so the zooxanthellae can get sunlight to make food. They also need warm water, a firm bottom to attach to, and wave action, which brings nutrients and oxygen to the attached animals. What makes a reef? Most reef-building corals are actually colonies of many polyps. Each animal makes a limestone skeleton shaped like a cup, but remains connected to the other polyps by a layer of tissue. As the years pass, new corals build skeletons on top of the old ones, and a reef is made. Only the surface of the reef is alive. The rest is made up of skeletons. What are you clicking on me for? If you want to learn some more fun facts about the ocean, click on the pictures and I'll tell you all I know. Baby cows aren't the only things that are called calves. A baby whale is also called a calf. I hope that fact amuses you. The sides and belly of the dragonfish aligns with organs that give off light, which draws prey towards it and lures mating partners in. 
Sounds like a disco to me. The gray whale can grow to be 50 feet long and weigh as much as 35 tons. Their tongues weigh about as much as a small family car, but don't try to drive one without a license. Lemon sharks give birth to 10 to 13 live baby sharks at a time. The little sharks are called pups. I don't even want to think about the diaper situation. Click on the steering wheel to choose a destination. Then pull the gear shift to travel there. There's a lot of bacteria down here, but what do they live on? They use chemicals in the bed water to make their own food, like plants use nutrients and the sun's energy to make food. Since there's no light down here, plants can't grow. Instead, bacteria form the base of the food chain at the hot vents. Wow! Who would have known bacteria are so important? A lot of animals live here because they can eat the bacteria, which is so abundant around the vent. It's like a food free-for-all at the vent. Meet Stout, the viper fish. Move your mouse and watch him follow the arrow. He's hungry for lanternfish, so click to make him open wide and gulp them down. Do you want to play some more? Water from the ocean seeps into the cracks in the ocean floor and gets heated up by hot lava. Then, the superheated water gets forced back up and escapes through these vents. It's like there's a pressure cooker under the vent that's heating water. This giant tube worm has no mouth or digestive system. But that's alright because bacteria living inside it provide it with food. No mouth! It must be speechless with gratitude for the bacteria! Actually, the worm protects the bacteria in exchange for the food. That's called symbiosis. This giant tube worm has no mouth or digestive system. But that's alright because bacteria living inside it provide it with food. No mouth! It must be speechless with gratitude for the bacteria. Actually, the worm protects the bacteria in exchange for the food. That's called symbiosis. place is incredible! I'm all fired up to explore the hot vents! Yeah. 
slide the red button up or down to choose an ocean depth. Check out how much food and light are available at that depth. Then press the blinking green light. What you'll get is an imaginary fish with adaptations for surviving at that depth. 